I'm really excited to also have Nathan Cox, our Chief Investment Officer on the call. Uh, Nate, we're gonna turn it over to, uh, as mentioned, he has over 15 years experience trading equities and, and derivatives in regular in equity markets and he's bringing his expertise over to our firm as well. So uh, Nate, I'll turn it over to you. How you doing? Great, thanks Alex and uh, doing well. Thanks so much for the information so far. Um, and yeah, let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about what we're actually doing in the fund and how we're managing some of the risk associated with these um, digital assets because I think that's sort of a, a high level concern, especially for some of the institutional investors and the high net worth individual clients, family offices that, that we are working with. Um, you know, a lot of folks are, are sort of eyeballing Bitcoin or Ethereum and wondering how to get involved or where to get involved, but it's not an easy decision to make. Um, you know, a lot of people still look at this as a very speculative asset class, but um, with the introduction of the derivative markets, which has really come online over the last, say, two years um, with large exchanges like Deribit and then now the CME, um, we've seen another level of uh, maturation with the uh, digital asset space that is becoming a more investable asset class for, for really institutional managers. So um, for us, what we're doing and, and how we manage our portfolio is, is twofold. And the first one is uh, we provide a digital over or a derivative overlay strategy on top of the core ownership of Bitcoin and Ethereum that the fund holds. So um, what we're essentially doing is we're using call options and put options to hedge out some of the risk that is associated with these digital assets. And because they do see some pretty wild swings, it's actually a, a great space for us to be involved in because it lends itself to either increased income generation by using things like short call positions to generate additional yield. Um, and then also using a long put position, which is essentially um, a hedge against a, a large down move or sort of a left tail event. Um, when we see these sort of downside volatility events, it's a way for the fund to protect returns and to protect investors from the inherent volatility that they see in these digital assets. So what we've put at the bottom is a very uh, simplified version of, of sort of what a return chart might look like if we, um, when we're hedging out a portfolio and essentially you see that sort of flat line at the bottom on the left, that would be because we're using these puts um, to hedge out some of the loss potential when we see these large downswings in the uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum markets. And naturally, we want to leave ourselves open to the right tail uh, volatility, which is the upside volatility in this space, because um, we also see, obviously, a lot of potential for these assets to move up and move up considerably. I mean, just as recently as November, you saw both uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum post over 30% gains just in a month. So those are the types of returns that um, we see in the space. It's not, it's not that it's consistently 30% every month or anything like that, but we do want to leave ourselves open to um, being highly correlated to the upside volatility. So um, we'll go to the next slide, Alex. Let's see. Alex, can we move on to the next slide? If not, I can speak a little bit to, I know what's coming, so there we go. So within the, uh, within the hedge, we, we talk about a hedge ratio and, and that's sort of um, you know, a nice term to, to describe how we're managing the the positions around and uh, the core holding of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, essentially what we're doing is we're operating within a range of sort of a maximum hedge and a standard hedge um, between 50 and 90% of the total Delta exposure to the underlying digital assets. So it means that at any given time, we are hedging the portfolio to uh, a maximum of 90% of the uh, effective long Delta that we hold with the underlying and um, reducing that when we see fit, when we see these sort of up and down moves and this volatility, um, managing that so that we can take some of the profitability of this and uh, roll it into something like the short call portfolio. And down there at the bottom, it's a, it's a pretty simplified version again, but um, it, just to give some investors or, or potential investors an idea of what sort of protection we, we try and um, achieve with the uh, derivative overlay. If you look at the down, say 10, 20, 30, and 
um, when we're hedging out the portfolio at say a 50%, um, the goal is to have a 50 beta or a 50% correlation to that downside volatility. So when you see a large down move, like a, you know, if you saw a down 50% move in Bitcoin, um, our goal is to achieve, in this case, a 50% hedge would achieve something like a 26% drawdown. And um, if we're 90% hedged, only a 7% drawdown. So really reducing our exposure on the downside. And if you look over there on the right side, those, those equivalent up moves, the 10, 20, 30, 50%, we wanna leave ourselves open to the potential of um, really riding those large upside volatility events. So, you know, you see the up 20 and we're still gonna move something like up eight, 17 to 18%. Um, likewise with the up 30%, we're still, you know, up something like 17 to 23%. So the goal, and uh, we can go over to the next slide here. Um, is, to, is to achieve something like an eight beta on the upside with a 50% beta on the downside. Um, this slide really, I just wanted to speak a little bit to um, sort of add on top of the, the massive corporate and institutional adoption that we've seen just from the big players like your, your PayPal's and Square um, with MicroStrategy being a, a real advocate of moving corporate treasuries into the digital asset space. The, the thing that we've seen, and, and this is my perspective coming from a, a hedge fund lens, is that we've seen a wide scale adoption of both Bitcoin and Ethereum in the derivative markets. So this is something that, um, you know, just two years ago was really sort of this um, burgeoning industry with a derivative play. But now we've seen over almost a 20x increase just in the just in 2020 um, in terms of the total liquidity that we've seen in the derivative space for Bitcoin and Ethereum. So. Uh, it speaks to the fact that institutions, especially financial institutions, have really started to um, get involved in terms of not only owning Bitcoin and Ethereum, but when they own those, the, the main use or the main um, you know, prerequisite for any of these funds is that they are able to hedge out these larger portfolios. And that's what, exactly what we're seeing in the um, digital asset space. So you have institutions coming in, purchasing you know, your, your Bitcoin and Ethereum coins, and um, then using the option market to hedge out some of that exposure. So um, it's sort of what the smart money players are doing, which is another reason why we wanted to offer something for our clients and our partners, our LPs, is a way to be involved in the digital asset space as it continues to gain momentum as uh, a real hedge for any sort of uh, currency inflation and fiat inflation, um, but doing so intelligently. So you're not just going in and purchasing uh, BTC or, or ETH outright, um, which is certainly a strategy. I would say it's more of a retail strategy um, and it's a great way to maybe tiptoe into some sort of exposure. But in terms of intelligently managing client money, um, we think that you know, real investors want to see some sort of uh, managed portfolio of these digital assets, which is exactly what um, we focused on doing for our clients. So um, you know, we've been um, putting this portfolio together now, and, and we've really seen some, some great results. I, don't, I think we'll, we'll start to share those um, down the road. But um, that's what we're seeing, and that's why we're excited to be in the space right now. We can move over to the next slide. The other side of the portfolio, and this sort of gets into our, our entire construction of the, um, the managed digital assets, but we, we hold two main sleeves of the portfolio. One is going to be in the derivative trading and derivative overlay. So that is a hedged portfolio of underlying coin and um, derivative assets. And then we also do a lending program that actually gives us a, a one delta exposure or linear exposure to both of these coins, but also provides an 8% uh, annual yield. So uh, it's another way to hedge out a little bit of the, the risk while we maintain uh, long exposure because overall we do, um, you know, we do subscribe to this stock to flow model and the expectation that especially um, right now we with this recent halving um, that there will be pretty explosive growth in, in the price of these digital assets. So um, as we see this wide scale adoption from corporate treasuries, from high net worth individuals and institutional investors, um, we think that the supply will continue to diminish as you know, these big players come in and essentially take Bitcoin and Ethereum offline by purchasing large stored reserves. So um, when you get a micro strategy or a, a mass mutual coming in and purchasing coins, um, you tend to see these coins stay offline. They, they're not trading them actively like a lot of the retail investors or um, even you know, some of the, the institutional players.